Hello my friends and welcome. Let's go to the front lines review to Luhansk Oblast. There we have not so good news for Ukraine because Russia again took quite a big territory of Ukraine including three of the villages. We are speaking about Nova Ehorivka, Serhivka and Nadia. The biggest one is Nova Ehorivka and unfortunately Russia reached the border between Luhansk and Kharkiv Oblast. For this hour they've been stomped on the border, however they have the quite big potential to continue their assault. Why is it possible? Because Russia concentrated 100,000 soldiers in that particular area. It is more army than Soviet Union used to assault on Afghanistan. Unfortunately, today Russia took quite a lot of the territory, so it was yesterday and it is today. Very fast move. Let's check out the distance uh, from this river till this border. It's almost 8 kilometers. Maybe they were moving for several days, but today we got the update. So it is just looks that they covered this distance for a single day, but in reality it's not like that. Let's see the situation update in this particular spot for 8 days. So in Karamazinivka, Russia started their assault from this point and day by day they took the ground. Initially it was like that and I thought oh they took quite a lot of the territory but later they took this part of the ground and today we have the major update of all of this front line. Russia reached the border with the Kharkiv region. It's terrible actually. Just yesterday then the picture was like that. We got the information from the Ukrainian officials that they repelled the Russian attempt to get control over this territory but today we have the new update where Russia took quite a lot of new territory. Well, the main Ukrainian defense logically goes all across those villages and there is also the elevation, the hill that goes also all across this territory. So it's preferable to build the trench over there, the main trenches. So I think that Ukrainian army is capable to stop Russians over here. You see, it's important to take the territory back and also it is important to hold it. But Russia has lots of their reinforcements and they try to get some of the ground to present victories for their society, let's say. And in the future, they will announce the new massive mobilization today. By the way, we're going to talk about it because Russia introduced the new laws about the mobilization. So speaking about this area, the main goal for this army that Russia concentrated is to get closer to uh, this water reservoir. So if they get Borova town under their control, they will also cut this road for Ukrainian supplies. And their main vector of attack, as you can see, directly pointing towards this town. If Russia is successful with that mission, they will cut Ukrainian army into two parts in that area. So without the adequate supply, Ukrainians would be forced to leave this area and move across this river and water reservoir. As you can see, potentially this situation could be very difficult for Ukraine. The distance to Borova from the Russian army is just 18 and a half kilometers. That's around 12 miles, not more than that. The problem here that if Russia breaks through the Ukrainian defense in this area, there would be no any natural obstacles, just few of the hills couple of lakes, that's it, and no many villages. Why villages are important? Because those are the constructions where Ukraine might build some sort of the defense. Here you can see just a single village behind those, well maybe this one, but after it it's the free road towards Berwa. But this time of the year the roads are not so important the ground may hold any weight. By the way, I guess there is the road, yes, it's the secondary one, but still, it does exist. What roads may do right now is to intensify and increase the supplements for the Russian army. So their idea is obviously to take it under control, but it's not as critical for assault as during the winter time, spring or late autumn. However, so far I cannot tell you whether this Russian assault is very critical for Ukrainian army or not, because they've took three of the small villages, that's it. But if I see a Russian army goes to Borova, leaving those villages behind, I would say it would be very critical for Ukrainian army. In that case, we may lose this part of the controlled territory. Unfortunately, it's like that. Hopefully, we'll get more reinforcements to that region and repel the Russian assault. Let's go to the Bakhmut area. There are no any changes for the military map. However, we have some of the videos saying that the fighting continues. 
Today, Russian channels reported that they lost Klishivka. I shared the image on my Telegram channel yesterday. The fighting is very hard for Russians over there. Also, Ukrainian officials reported that we took Andreevka village under control, but it's hard to say because there was no military map update and my friends who are fighting on the front lines are not now at this area to confirm that information. Also, I heard the opinion from the military experts that it's not profitable for Ukraine to take Bakhmut right now. It's important to take the hills around and target the Russian military inside the city. So Russia would send more and more reinforcements to Bakhmut and those would be kicked out by Ukrainian artillery. Well, that theory potentially could be profitable for Ukraine, but in that case we should take this hill and that one under control. Plus, it's better to take the land on the north and the land on the south to partially encircle the Bakhmut city. In that case, Russia would be out of tools to use their artillery against the Ukrainian forces. About our guys in Kherson, near to Antonovsky Bridge, there is no any movement, my friends. Almost two months have passed and our guys are still controlling this area. It's not expanding and they are not moving back to Ukrainian territory. Obviously, we have regular rotations. New soldiers arrive to the place. Those who need rest go to Ukrainian controlled territory. But there is no advancement towards Aleshki. Actually, it's the single point where Ukrainian army may advance from those positions. Ukraine continue to use artillery HIMARS systems to target the Russian important vehicles, for example, the air defense system BUG that is used against the Ukrainian airplanes like Suhoi Su-24 that may carry the Storm Shadow cruise missiles. It is basically the downside of those missiles that they could be only launched from the airplanes. That's why we need attack amps to be more versatile. And that is what happened to the place. The book was somewhere over there. You can see there was also the ammunition depot. It's on fire, on fire, book completely gone. There are also kind of powerful artillery systems in Ukrainian army, peons. We know that Russia also has those, but recently Russia lost many of them according to the Oryx resource. Those were targeted by the HIMARS artillery system that has the longer range compared to a peon. Both of the sides usually choose the forest lines to cover their artillery or any kind of other vehicles. This time the Russian artillery Gyatsint was spotted by the drone and the fire was corrected and directed, so Russian Gyatsint was targeted by the HIMARS missile, the single one. One more Russian book system was targeted again by the HIMARS missile. It was a big kaboom. Again, my friends, some of the videos I cannot post on this platform. For that, please check out my Telegram channel. You might find it in the video description just below. A very interesting video was filmed on a drone. As you can see, this is the bottle of water, no grenade, nothing. The story is that some of the Ukrainian soldiers were wounded and trapped between Ukrainians and Russians positions. So our air surveillance dropped the water for them and asked them to follow the drone and luckily our guys made it to home. One more Russian K-52 was targeted today by the Ukrainian air defense. Since the beginning of the Ukrainian attack on the south, Russia started to lose quite a lot of helicopters, including K-52. Wagner sends more and more convoys to Belarus. Today, 11th convoy was registered, this time with heavy armor vehicles including some of the tanks before the Russian ministry officially said that Wagner transferred all of the heavy weaponry to the regular Russian armed forces, but it seems like it wasn't true. Pentagon confirmed the new military package for Ukrainian army. I already told you about it. It's $400 million aid and here you can see on the screen what we'll have. It's quite a lot. But Russia also has its own military allies. For example, Iran is building the new factory to produce the drones on the Russian territory. Unfortunately, it's not a good sign for Ukraine. Because sophisticated kamikaze drones in large quantity may really cause the Ukrainian army severe losses and change the situation on the front lines. From what I understood, Ukraine doesn't have enough analogs of Shahid or Lancet drones. Hopefully, we'll have those in the future. There was the big program announced by Ukrainian government to produce effective long-range kamikaze drones massively. 
but we only occasionally see them in action. For example, four of them went to Moscow yesterday. But Russia used dozens of the Shahid and Lancer drones every day. So we definitely need to do something with our drone program. The Russian Defense Minister Shoigu went to North Korea to ask for more military help. As we know, North Korea supplied some of the artillery shells to the Russian army. Russia is very limited in artillery shells right now, so they need more and more. Probably they will exchange artillery shells for some sort of the big rockets. This is the damage blade of the MQ-9 Reaper American drone. Russians have the tactics to drop the anti-rocket flashes just in front of the American drones, causing the damages to the drones themselves. This time one of the blades hit the flash and luckily drone returned to the base. About the new Russian mobilization laws that now been introduced for the voting in their parliament, which is called Duma. First of all, they want to rise the limit for the mandatory servicemen from 27 to 30 years. Also, they want to rise the limit for those who already served their mandatory term and now are in reserve till 60, sometimes till 65 years, depends on their positions and ranks. At the beginning of this year, Russia introduced the electronic military notices for their population. According to the new law, if Russian man gets the notice in his electronic cabinet in special application or on the website, he should go to army straight away. Otherwise, he would just be cut from the Russian society. He will be unable to leave the country even they want to vote for that this time. His driving license would be suspended. He would not be able to take credits in any sort of the banks and he would be hunted by the Russian police and military. If they catch him, they will forcibly send him to army. It is Live Orwell 1984. If you don't know that book, you may google it, it describes the modern-day Russia. Today, this guy in Duma, his name is Andriy Kartopolov, he represents the Russian army interests and also he is the MP of the Russian parliament. He says that the new law is written for the big war and for the global big mobilization. Wow, those are not good news, my friends. It seems like Putin wants to go all-in mobilizing the vast part of the Russian population, Russian men. Well, the Russian elections are coming in March 2024 and only after that I think that Putin may announce some sort of mobilization. An interesting story about the Russian oil. Ukraine purchases the diesel fuel from Hungary and Turkey, but those countries use the Russian oil to produce diesel and other types of fuel. It means that Russia refuels the tanks that are fighting against Russia. It also means that Russia got the funds via Hungary or Turkey to themselves and they may use those to produce more weaponry to fight against Ukraine. I'm always telling that this is a very strange war. My friends, now press the like to this video and also if you want to support my job, there are some links available in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and supporters on the YouTube sponsorship. Thank you very, very much for keeping me motivated. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.